Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Congregation may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So my little boy Julian knows that I love flowers. So naturally, every flower, whether it's a dandelion or, or my neighbor's tulips, they are picked and, <laughs> and brought inside for me. And it goes the same way every time. Julian hands me the flower and says, it's for you, Mom. Isn't it beautiful? And my answer is always the same. Yes. Whether it's a leedy, weedy little flower or a tulip, my answer is always yes. Because the truth is, even a weedy little flower is beautiful. They are. Dandelions are beautiful. Someone disagrees with this? <laughs> Talk to Julian. But it is the inherent nature of flowers to be beautiful because they have to attract pollinators, right? And because of this inherent quality, flowers have the ability to bring beauty to any space, no matter how mundane it is. There are a million pictures on the internet of flowers growing out of sidewalks and in rocks. It's bizarre. You just put flowers growing in weird places and these come up by the millions. There's tons of them, and I brought a couple. And my question is, well, I know the answer, but my question is, why do people take these pics by the millions? Why is a flower growing out of a sidewalk or a rocks something special? And the answer is because they're beautiful, and they're startling, and it can take a sidewalk and make it into something worth taking a picture of, right? Their beauty glorifies. And that word glorify is all I really want to talk about today. We had all those readings and they were all quite lengthy and they kind of got jumbled up. If you do this and do that, if you do that, don't do this. Love all of it, but I just want to talk about glorify. That was in our gospel reading at the very end. It means to exalt and to magnify. It means to make something beautiful. And the Greek word Jesus uses will sound familiar to some of you. It's doxa, as in doxology. And if you are new to this church or even new to the Lutheran faith, I want to show you something that works magic when you sing the doxology. Join me if you know it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above ye every host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. It's Lutheran magic. <laughs> but that's the doxology. It's a glory glorifying song. And when we sing the doxology, we are glorifying God with our praise. We're planting lyrical flowers around God, beautifying him. And that beautifying action is what Jesus is talking about when he says, 
My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Jesus is saying that when we follow him, our actions will naturally glorify God. They will make God more beautiful. People, Jesus says, you and I have the power to make something more beautiful, more appealing. We have the power to glorify. And that, brothers and sisters, is a tough concept for us, especially if you were raised Lutheran or, God forbid, Catholic. I meant to say, and Catholic, sorry. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. Lutherans and Catholics, we have grown up hearing in the church just how sinful we are, right? We rightfully teach ourselves in the church, especially Lutherans, how desperately we need salvation. My pastor growing up would yell at us every Sunday that we were rot gut sinners. It's an inspiring message. Uh, but that teaching can also condition us to feel guilty rather than capable, right? To feel as if we are more likely to mess something up than to make it beautiful. But Jesus is very clear here. We are capable of glorifying things, of making them beautiful. And God wants that from us. Not only that, but God even created us to make him more beautiful. And maybe that's not entirely clear in Jesus' words today. So let me show you where God has made this clear. Can you put up Psalm 8 for me? When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. Hear that again. Crown them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the work of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. Ground, crown them with glory and honor. God created us to be crowned with glory and honor. He created us with the inherent ability to glorify his creation with our very presence, with our tending and our tilling and our care of it. We aren't just sinners. But here's the truth. Yes, the ability to glorify is a divinely created gift given to us. But what we glorify is up for grabs. It's like those flowers. They glorify what they're rooted in, wherever they have been placed or planted. So they can glorify your kitchen table, your prom dress, or your sidewalk. And what we glorify depends on where we place and plant ourselves, what we spend our time and energy on, what we talk about, what we invest in. We are going to glorify something. It is just our nature. But because we are sinners, we aren't always glorifying the things God would have us glorify. Do you all remember... Uh, years ago, there was this thing called a word cloud. It was a craze that was all over Facebook. If you clicked on the link, your Facebook posts and comments would get filtered through an algorithm and out would pop a word cloud. It looks something like this. Show us, Maureen. Right? Notice the words are different sizes. So the more often you used a word, the larger your word cloud it was in your word cloud. Okay? Does that make sense? And the less you used it, the smaller it got. Thanks, Maureen. So, of course, I did my own word cloud, 
and out came kind of what I expected. My kids' names were really big. Faith was really big because I talk about church all the time. There was one concerning thing, though. <laughs> my husband's name was on there, but it was smaller than the words Mountain Dew. <laughs> 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 Clearly, my priorities are a mess, right? My life glorifies soda more than it glorifies marriage. <laughs> it's, it's a problem. <laughs> honestly, I would have never guessed that. Maybe some of you would have guessed how much I love Mountain Dew, but I didn't know that. But therein lies the challenge before us today. Intentionality and choice. Our lives are going to glorify something. It is a gift we have been given. And Jesus is calling on us to be intentional with that power. To take an honest assessment of what our life currently glorifies. And to choose to glorify God by rooting ourselves in Jesus as his disciples. Because if we are not intentional in what we root ourselves in, we could very well glorify the wrong things. Don't waste your glorifying power, Jesus is saying to us today. Graft yourself into me. Spend time in my word, Receive my Holy Spirit in baptism. Share my meal with each other. Pray as I have taught you. I am the vine. You are the branches. Together we will glorify God. And in Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch, that long reading that Lene gave us from Acts, we have a perfect example of intentionality and choice and how our rootedness determines who we glorify. So real quick, Philip sees a man riding in a chariot because when a golden chariot goes by, you can't help but see it. And in it was the man in charge of this queen's entire treasury, literally rooted in a golden throne. Every aspect of this man's life, including his body, has been dedicated to serving wealth, collecting it, counting it, preserving it, and that is what people notice when he drives by. That's what his life is glorifying. Wealth, privilege, power. He doesn't have to say a word. But did you notice what happened the very moment he learned who Jesus is and gets baptized? The text says, he went on his way rejoicing. He sang a doxology. He chose to glorify God with his words. Being rooted in Jesus means that his life will cease giving glory to a golden chariot and will begin giving glory to God, to the mercy and healing and peace found in Jesus. His intentions, his choices can't help but glorify God. And when we are rooted in Jesus, when we choose to spend our time and energy following Jesus, when we are intentional, our actions will glorify God too. And in a world full of people glorifying anything but God, isn't that power welcome? To glorify a God of grace and mercy and to make him all the more appealing and beautiful to others. And the truth is, brothers and sisters, even our most mundane actions glorify God when we are rooted in Christ. And to prove it, I want to tell you about our friendship pads. You see those burgundy little pads you have that you sign your name in every week so that we can track you? <laughs> those were actually, they are actually supplied by our own Carl Buch. He makes them for us. Oh, I'm going to show you. 
It's just a little act of service that I would say glorifies God. You can put it up, Maureen. And just the other day he was in here, he brought new ones in, but I want to show you what he used to transport them. <laughs> Next picture, please. It was available. <laughs> <laughs> Crowned in glory. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you folks. When you are rooted in Jesus, even bush light can glorify God. <laughs> I was thinking of all these years of these Thanksgiving meals. All these years of just meat and potatoes. It's just cooking. And Linda doesn't even like turkey. But hasn't it been making God more beautiful in this community? And it all points to people who are rooted in something worth being rooted in. And even the simplest actions done in the name of our faith can make beautiful God's divine goodness and mercy. So take possession of your glorifying power and give it fully to Jesus and watch how he can make something beautiful grow in and through you and through this community of saints. To God is the power to crown in glory, and to us is the joy. Thanks be to God. Amen.